and we thought it might be fun to get things off to a flying start. One of our bush pilots is down here in a float plane. He's going to take off and land. But before we get down to Steve, this area on the left, the immediate left, is actually not somebody's backyard driveway. That's a fully built a 900 foot runway and if you were a pilot looking at charts where to land in Fairfield, you will find this described as Fox Field in this case, the family of the first day here. Right after World War II, we bought this land and put this company here. It's been here a long time. And they have attracted a number of bush pilots to live in their little neighborhood that they subdivided. Some of the best in the world fly out of here winter and summer. Now, of course, uh, you Minnesotans, we're just getting to know each other, but I have to tell you that we have over three million lakes in our state and a whole lot of rivers that are thawed out. So floats are real popular this time of year and I hope you'll get a chance to maybe fly with one of our bush pilots during your trip. And there's a lot of water to land on with the rivers and the lakes being in the liquid state. But along about Halloween, you've got to take those floats off if you're going to fly in the wintertime because those float planes don't land well on three and a half feet of ice on the top of the river or the lake and so some of the boys and girls keep the wheels on you can see a couple of super cubs over here with the big balloon tires there's a float plane parked in front and a little later on of course they'll be thinking about getting the skis on the bottom now steve is waiting for us to get out of the way that's steve canaster down there in a 1951 vintage piper super cub and he's one of the best mechanics and airplane rebuilders that we have in the neighborhood. So it's kind of fun to have him do the flying for you. He's been flying about 20 years. His daddy before him about 50 years. So it kind of runs in the Canaster family flying airplanes like the Victory boys learn to drive boats. Now he will have to get his airspeed up to 45 miles an hour to I think he's just about ready to fire while it here and, and uh, get the show on the road and here he comes. Now he's going to fly a circle around us, and Grant will keep him on the monitor while he gets ready to land. But these landings are pretty dramatic with this much wind. It'll be interesting to see how he approaches it this afternoon. One of the guys that flies out of here, one of those red and white airplanes, he got a call one January day, 15 years or so ago, from our hospital. And they said, Billy, can you fly up to the Yukon River for a gradual arc? And then, once he gets even with the river, he's going to stare straight ahead. He will not look at the surface. That's a, the worst thing to do when you're flying a float plane. You stare straight ahead, gently set the airplane down, give yourself a little hang time before the uh, floats settle into the water if the wind allows him to do it. He'll kind of flare it out here at the end and set it right down. So crank those cameras, here we go. That's pretty right there. One float and then the other. And then he'll come up here nice and close and fling that door open and wave right through it. That is Steve Panaster in the Piper Super Cub. Thank you, sir. He's gonna come right around here and let you get a good look at him. Zoom in, you'll see his teeth clean. <laughs> All right, Steve, good job. Now, you'll notice he's, uh, he's dressed for a function, not fashion. He left the leather jacket, the white coin scarf, and the goggles back in the closet. A little too warm in that small cockpit to dress up. <coughs> You're going to find that about us. We, uh, we're not into high fashion in this part of the world. Function 